Hello? Are you a designer? Oh yeah, then you should absolutely design your resume. Oh, how to do it? Uh, funny enough, I'm actually filming a YouTube video on it. Uh-huh, yeah, I can send you a link later if you want. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see ya. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi there. Well, as you were eavesdropping in this video, I'm going to walk you through in detail how to create your first, second, or even tenth design resume from scratch. I will go through information hierarchy, margin, spacing, alignment, composition, color, topography. We will we, we have more. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. So first, let's talk about high-level design system and information hierarchy. I'm going to open up Sketch. You can follow along if you like. So a design system is a framework, a component library that you can reuse the format, the framework, the structure over and over without breaking your content. If that's too much to remember, just know a design system is a way to create consistency. As designers, we love consistencies and we want to bring more consistency to the world. Because you know the world is full of chaos and tend to be more chaotic due to the second law of thermodynamics, entropy. I think I'm getting too far here, but you get my idea. Essentially, we don't want chaos. A well-designed design system will help combat that. And that is what you're doing with your UX resume. If you remember from my 13 things to include in your resume video, that basically tells you there are different sections of information, like education, projects, experiences. Each of these has multiple layers of information, which lead us to the importance of hierarchy. What is the hierarchy one, two, three for this section? That should be the question that you're asking for every section that you're writing on your resume. And let's take a look at an example. FYI, to start, you can just use Helvetica or Helvetica New. It's not worth searching for fonts at this point, and I will cover that later. So first, let's make a artboard, right? Make an artboard, let's say just use the US letter size, which is 8.5 by 11. We can adjust the size later pretty easily, so don't worry about getting so specific at the numbers yet. So an artboard, right? So you have education. We can zoom in a little bit more. So we have education. Um, let's use my grad school, Art Center College of Design, okay? And then we have what? Um, undergrad, let's say undergrad, so it's bachelor, I think that's how you spell it, right? And what major? Uh, well, since we're doing a UX resume, uh, the most relevant one would be interaction design. Graphic design could also work, but let's just say interaction design. So right now, we seem to have three layers of information, right? We have the school, the degree, and the major. But technically, the degree and the major could be the same thing because it's Bachelor of Science in Interaction Design on your diploma. So very easily, you can group them and reduce the number of information from three to two, all right? So you can do maybe BS Interaction Design. Simplify it, it's great. So what's next? Maybe we want to add your major GPA, right? GPA is a good thing to have, especially if you have a high one. It's part of the video in the 13 things to include if you want to check that out. So major GPA, right? GPA is 4.0. Right now, these are actually three different pieces of information. And if you run on the hierarchy, right? We have uh, the school, we have the major slash degree, and we have some detail about you in this degree, in this major which is the GPA in this case, and maybe want to use the bullet point style, that's why I put a, a hyphen here. So to set this hierarchy up correctly or properly, we can use ordering. What's the order of information that you're presenting, right? The first piece of information you present, it might have a higher rank than maybe the second or the third, right? So we can assign one, two, three to these. So number one in this case would be your school, and then it's your major, and then the last one, it would be your major GPA, okay? And since we read top to bottom and left to right. And if we're presenting the education section in, a, in this format, which means we're going to read from top to bottom. So the first information is going to be the most important one, and then second, and then third. To further emphasize this hierarchy, there are actually several things you can do. So one thing is font size, and then also font weight to achieve that. With just font weight and font size, there are already thousands of combinations. So feel free to experiment what works for you. Let's say I want to make this one bold 
to emphasize its importance, right? Boom, it grabs your eye a little more than the second one, right? Then maybe the second one is medium, okay? And then the last one, I'll just keep it regular. Of course, there are a lot more you can do, but as simple as this, you just change the font weight, even keep them the same font size, you already have a component set up for a three layer hierarchical structure. I'm actually not too happy with this, so let me just make the major smaller, maybe give it a 14 point, right? They really establish that hierarchy. You can tweak the spacing a little bit. Let's keep it four point. Four point between each one, right? So you see that highlight, the red highlight, that means they're the same uh, number of spacing. So we have one group, okay? Cool, so already you have one. So we can look at other sections in your resume that you might be able to reuse this structure, this component. Think about what else you in your UX resume that you also have a three layer structure. Maybe internship, let's see. Let's try it, right? Uh, okay, what do we have? Airbnb, okay. Interaction design intern. And what you did, right? Uh, we can make something up. Um, worked on first time guest booking and check in experiences. Then the next one, next bullet point will be conducted user testing with five users. Again, this is not the best copywriting. Um, it's just an example that I can think of on the spot. Increase, right? We show what you did and impact, remember? So increased um, guest five star rating by 5%. Excellent. Uh, another thing to note is you don't want to have one word hanging on the second line. So what we do is maybe we can increase the the width so that it fits in one line. So we can make this up, move this up. Cool. Seems like an internship also follow this three layer setup. Great. We can use it here. Boom. You have it. So this might also apply to your project. So why not make another copy? Side project. So in this side project, I am the interaction designer taking over the whole thing, okay? Or UX designer, make it different. So zooming out, it seems like the, um, the first line and the second line, they s somehow kind of blend together. I can further improve it. So to improve it, V0.1, we can maybe make the um, second line medium italic. Yeah, there's some distinction, right? Make the third one even smaller, 12, right? More distinct. Four, four, make sure they align, make sure the spacing is even. Therefore, for this part, think about the order of information for each part of your section. And then design your block, your component with a distinct, with a clear hierarchy, one, two, three. So next, let's go to white space. As I mentioned in the other video, use too much white space, meaning keep a lot of white space, a lot of breathing room. Remember, your content is always claustrophobic. If you don't give it enough room, it will literally die. Your resume will die. Before we dive deeper into the demo for white space, let's just fill some information in so we have more content to work with. Your name, right? Michael Rule. That's my restaurant name, by the way. And your, my email and my phone number. Make sure to chunk the information so that it's easy for the recruiter to process, okay? Also, portfolio link, right? And we can make the line spacing a little bit more. So this is one thing that we're, gonna, we're about to go into, which is spacing between different lines, okay? So just remember that. And let's switch this, right? Because again, there's also an order of information for each section. Your education is not the main thing a recruiter wants to know. A recruiter will want to know your related experience, which again, referring to the 13 things to include, the most important and relatable one is your work experience. So we can put work experience for this one. And your internship is definitely one. So we can make a few more internships. As you are progressing your career from a freshman designer to a senior designer uh, in college, you should have done a few internships, right? So four internships, big names, you're gonna win it. Uh, side projects, maybe there are two. Side project two, side project one. Oop, one, yes, education. 
Yep, that's it. We can adjust the size of the artboard pretty easily by holding down shift and then drag one of the corners. Because of the shift, everything is constrained, so the proportion, the aspect ratio of, of the artboard will be the same. Meaning it will always be the same ratio as an 8.5 by 11 letter size paper that fits into the printer, right? So we can adjust it to a point that we can work on some white space. So this might be a good place to start. So there are a few types of spacing. There's one that I just mentioned, space within lines. The second one is space within each block, right? So between education and projects or project to work experience, how much space do you have there? And third is the margin around everything, the margin around a block, margin around the entire page. So we can look at that. Line spacing, right? Uh, as we're designing the block, we already set the spacing between each element is four. So four, ooh, this is actually six, so we should adjust it to make, make sure it's consistent. Is the education right correct? Four correct, okay, great, ready. So spacing between lines, we have set the space between line is four, so each of them looks compact. So for space between lines, if you have too much space, it will feel pretty separated, right? For example, if I turn it into, let's give it a boost of 10, and boom. It looks very separated, there's no coherence. You start to feel like it's pretty separated. It doesn't look good, it doesn't look right. It's hard to scan information because I don't know what my eyes is supposed to be jumping onto next, right? And if it's too little, there's no spacing between two, zero, right? They're literally butting against each other. It feels too tight it will be harder for the recruiter to process. Find the spacing that looks right and looks good to you, and then just stick with that. I start with four, it looks fine, so I will just use four as the baseline to work with. And then next is the spacing around each block, right? So between each block, each of my internships, within the work experience section, or just let's give it, turn it into experience. What is it, right? It's 30 right now. 30 looks fine, right? 30 Airbnb and Apple, I can see them distinctly different, two different blocks of, information, uh, Tesla to it, 30, Facebook to it, 30. Great, they are very even. But maybe they are a little too loose. Hmm, let, well, let me try 20. All four together should look cohesive as a whole under experience. So maybe I want to bring this closer to experience. 10 maybe, right? Proper spacing between the two. Read it as a whole, as a whole group, right? So that means if that's 10, that means I need this to be 10. Project, there should be another one for projects. Since it's 10, okay, it's 10, and it's 20, boop, 20, excellent, so we have it. So we have some spacing between education and project. We need to separate them, but how much spacing do we use? Uh, well, we have 20 between these two, so let's see if 20 works. 20, right? So now we use the same 20 between two sections. Well, 20 between blocks, and we use 20 between sections. How does it feel? They, well, to me, they somehow blend together. So what can we do? Well, we can shift them down, or give it a 40, or more distinct. If it's not enough, 60. If you, I've zoomed it far away, far enough away, you can see they are distinctly one group of information, right? Two group, and then three, right? They are pretty distinct, and it looks fine. Okay, so cool. We have set this up, spacing around each block, and section, done. Okay, what about spacing as margin around the whole screen, around the whole page? The ID info, we can measure the spacing between the top edge and left edge, 53, 54, well, let's make it whole number. So it should be the same around the whole page, right, consistent margin. So let's give it a 50. 50, great, okay. So what is it right now uh, to the bottom? 131, okay, that means we should shrink it a little bit more. Okay, well, you get the idea, it should be 50. But now, it's not 50 here, so what can we do? We can shift it over, right? We have 57, so we can, right, move this to be 50. Right now, you can see there seems to be more space in between these two columns. And there's so little space between the second column and the right edge of the screen. Well, it's not ideal. Well, well, then let's make the measurement a little bigger to make sure that it has enough space. 35. And visually, we can also move this over, the second column over. It becomes 30 right now. Most of the time, your text is not going to line up perfectly to the end of the box. 
just because there's so many different words there, you can, always, you can always rephrase them to make them appear to have more space and utilize this negative space. And you can kind of see, right, the, the space here, the 50, is kind of close to here, right? And visually, they look fine just because there's so much different negative space around each block of text. So it's fine to technically have a real 30 margin or 30 spacing. And then to the right, 55, I can shrink it down a little more. Boom, we have it. So right now, we, as you can see the whole resume, right? We have an even margin. We have set up the line spacing, four pixels, and there are plenty of spacing for it to, for it to breathe, for it to grow. So we have plenty of space uh, up here. So your eyes will just automatically, naturally go to the ID info. And maybe the ID info will need a little bit more emphasis because the font width is a little bit too light right now. So I'm gonna bump it up from regular to medium, okay? So, hmm, feels bolder. Um, the spacing is a little bit too much. Let me reduce it to 20. A little too tight, 22. And then there's some space be be below. You can also add another side project if you like. And then, yeah, you have it. And then you might want to adjust the spacing uh, to make them more parallel in a way. And one trick you can do is to, you know, align the apple to the side project. I can select all of them, right? So everything looks so neat. And that's what we're getting into next, alignment. So as we are on this, this is a trick you can do if you have three or six of the same three layer info structure set up and then they happen to be in relatively the same position you can even though they're in a different section one is experience and one is project you can still use this trick you can use the ruler tool to align the um, hierarchy one information like apple to side project you can temporarily ignore the section title project it's less important because it's just to it's just a word to categorize what this whole section is about. So the content of the content should be considered first, not the title of the content. So right now there appear to be some random spacing, 43, but if this alignment gives a good read and good grid structure, that's what you're going for. Because a good resume design always appear to have a strong grid. And a lot of the graphic design teacher or classes you go to, they might tell you to set up a grid first and then put contents in. I approach it kind of in a different way. So I place the content where I feel like they should be first. And then I would zoom out and see what kind of grid would this would fit in. And then it looks like this should fit in a two column view, two column grid, right? One and two. It's kind of pretty obvious when you set up things this way. And then when you have this and then you try to align everything, select everything, Click the left align, align, everything, left align. Once you have a two column layout, two column grid, you can really easily run your eye from the top of the page to the bottom of the page, just along this line. It creates a really strong visible line, right? This visible line you create and also the same thing here. So once you create that, it, it really feels rigid and strong and really disciplined, right? And that's the feel you want to convey to your a potential hiring manager or recruiter. That's one crucial traits or characteristics a designer should have. And fun fact, this is actually kind of how I got my third internship. Just because my hiring manager really liked the really clean, really structured layout that I set up. So you have done the pass on the vertical read. How about horizontal, right? You can align these two, right? Apple, side project. By doing this, you are trading off the project. It's not aligning with anything. It's not a big issue because I think it's a good trade-off. You misalign one thing, but you align three other things versus you go for project uh, 40, right? And then all four things, all project, side project one, two, three, they all misalign. Not a great trade-off. So I'd rather align these six and give up this one. And zoom out, they look fine. So this align, which is great. I can put some line, draw some line here. And we should also align the titles, right? Because they should hold up the very first front line for the horizontal layout. And if we draw more lines, if we draw more lines, we have a really nice two column layout, right? These are the classic ones you we see in some sort of graphic design projects. So the last thing in alignment is to zoom out, 
really squint your eye and try to see how many blocks of information that you see. Right now, uh, it's kind of clear that there are four blocks, right? You have your ID info, right? And then down, you have the whole giant internship, and then down actually, right? It's four blocks. If you see those four things, and those are actually four sections you have, congratulations, because you have set up the margin spacing and the alignment correctly. This is what you will appear if you squint your eyes to the screen test. Let's delete them and move on to the next one, which will be topography. So topography is basically a visual language. It sets a mood, a tone, and an atmosphere for any of the print or UI material. So think about what kind of tone you want to set for your resume. What kind of atmosphere you want to set for it when a recruiter or hiring manager read it. So if we turn everything into comic sense, is it bad? Depends how you look at it, right? If you uh, apply, if you, this is your resume to, for you to apply to a toy design company, this might work, this might suit the, the context, the, right, the tone is right. The comic sense can be a tone that is more rounded, a little more friendly, that's why it's comics and then sense, right? So this is fine. But if you want this to apply to something a little bit more formal or serious or not, nothing comics or toy related. But if you're not sure what tone or what mood or what atmosphere to set, you can literally use Times New Roman, right? It's not going to go wrong. It's classic font, it's default, it's safe, it's generic, but it's safe. Or you can go back to Helvetica New or Helvetica. And you think Helvetica looks bad? Think twice. Do you think Apple and Pinterest have bad design? No, right? They have pretty good design. And did you know they use Helvetica and Helvetica New? Because there are also things you can do. You can, for example, select this ID info, right? In the character section, you can reduce the character, meaning you're reducing the character spacing, letter spacing between each letter. So everything now becomes 1.2 point closer to each other. So it feels tighter. So you can adjust that. You can increase it to 10 letter spacing. Everything is so far apart. It kind of gives you the, um, the movie title um, feel, right? Because when you see the movie title, it always zoom in and then the letter spacing gets bigger. But we are not doing that here. We don't only have one word. We have four lines of information and each one has some weird hyphen, a dot, and the add sign. So it doesn't work that way. So you can use the default or maybe tweak it a little bit, make it a little tighter to create that tight feel if you wish into your, on your resume. Negative point is not bad, right? It tightens everything up. Uh, especially some of the, um, the line spacing. For some topography, they tend to be a little bit looser. So if you just tighten it a bit, it hugs the center of the block better. Everything feels more cohesive. It could even pass the screen test a little bit, a little bit better. So I can select everything and give it a 0.2. Right, so everything feels tighter, the grid could be stronger. So my last note for this topography chapter is that if you don't want to use Helvetica or Times New Roman, no generic font for you, but you don't know what font to pick, there's one trick or tip I can give you, which is you go to your favorite website, your favorite branding site, see what topography they use, what typeface they use, and then you just use that typeface and try it on your resume. If that font works, great, you have it. If it doesn't, then go to another of your favorite site or product or services, use that font, try it again. The worst case is just you fall back to the New Times Roman. I keep saying New Times Roman, it's Times New Roman. Helvetica, Helvetica New, SF Pro Display. You can just use it as your V1 and then work your way up. You're not gonna have your perfect resume on the first time when you're doing it, so. There's always room to improve, always chance to iterate, find a new font and apply. And here we are on the last chapter, maybe the one that you were waiting for, you want to hear the most, color, or any decorative piece you want to add to your resume. If you're doing it, you should do it right. An accent color is totally fine, you can totally have it, it's part of your personal brand, personal identity, you can use it, it's totally okay. So for example, my accent color is hot pink. Right, let's just pick hot pink. Oh, I already have one. Hot pink, boom. My name is in hot pink, hot pink. You can also apply to the section title. This is good because the section title, they are not as important as the content, but you kind of need them to navigate between different sections. So having it in accent color really helps draw attention. Okay, 
I'm on this one experience. If I don't like it, I can go to the next one and then my eyes will automatically know which one I should jump into, right? It's either from experience to education or just down to the project. But of course, since it's accent color, you don't want to overuse it. So if you give all the title in hot pink, that will be way too much. So use your accent color wisely and with a really, really clear intention. Next will be logos, but I would say probably not. You can experiment. I don't strongly encourage it, but again, I'm not really against it. I, I totally agree. Logos are great. They're visual. They are easy to recognize, especially like these big brands, Airbnb, Apple, Tesla, Facebook. When you have that, they will know, oh, okay, these are the companies they work for. The big four, the top ones, the fang. But at the same time, think about it this way. If you're using logos, right, so that means you need to have logos for all the internships you have. If you work for big name, big names, and then a small local company that nobody knows about, but you still put a logo in it. And then in that case, when the recruiter or hiring manager read it, they will for sure, I, I will actually say guaranteed, they will not know it. But at the same time, because it's so different from the big name logos, it would draw absolutely unnecessary attention to that spot, which kind of wastes their time trying to process or think about what this is, but it's not that important. So this logo fails to achieve its mission, which is for people to recognize it. So the problem with logos in this one is, one, it creates inconsistency. You have big brand, big brand, big brand, unknown logo. Second, because it's unknown, it draws unnecessary attention, which is not your intention, you don't want that, but it could happen if you do that. So that is why I technically, theoretically, mostly don't recommend having logos. For my resume, I did not use any logos. I thought about it for the exact same reason, for the benefit of the logo, it's recognizable. But at the same time, I also know it will break consistency and draw unnecessary attention. So I dropped my idea. And of course, not all my internships are big companies. They are also ones that people don't know about. So what's the point? It's no point. Don't do it. Drop it. Yeah, so right here, right now, within 20 minutes, you already make a resume from scratch in Sketch with all the alignment, topography, colors, spacing, all that considered. It's not the best, not the perfect one, well, because it's your V1, but this is definitely a nice starting point for you to go on your V2, V3, V5, V20 journey. And of course, this is a UX resume workshop video. Of course, I'll have bonus content for you. I'll be more than happy to review your UX resume if you do the following two things. One, smash the like button to help support me spending hours creating this video for you. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have smashed the like button that you liked the video. And then you can send your resume to my email, which you can find on the About tab in my channel. Make sure to include your YouTube username so I know that you have left a comment, that you have liked the video. And I will review your resume, give you some feedback, and a shout out in the next video. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Tschüss!